Welcome to the audio episode of this five-part series where I talk you guys through the ins and outs of my live streaming home studio. In our overview episode, I briefly talked about audio setups that you might want to try at home to get yourself started with equipment that you already have or equipment that you might be willing to invest in. But with this video, I'm going to be talking more intricately uh, in the realm of what audio equipment I use for my stream. So let's dive right in. I'm going to start with the question that I'm asked the most while I'm live streaming and across my videos, and that is, what mic am I using? I use the Neumann TLM 103. This is probably one of the more affordable mics in the Neumann range it's definitely in one of the lowest tiers that they offer it's still pretty expensive but for me it was definitely a worthwhile investment because I needed a mic that would be multi-purpose I bought this mic about six years ago I can definitely vouch for its longevity this microphone has traveled with me to and from different studios it lives primarily in this space for my live streaming setup now but I also use it for recording demos at home I take it to the studio and use it for my final vocal takes for any songs I release as well every song that you hear from me, I've used the Neumann TLM 103 for my vocal. What really tipped the scales for me in terms of picking this microphone over any other was really not with live streaming in mind. I picked up this mic initially because it has a beautiful flat response. It doesn't color your vocal. And in terms of a nice clean pop vocal, that combination of a TLM 103 with uh, a Neve preamp was the avenue I was going for. So initially it was an investment into the music side of things for me, but in terms of using it for live streaming, it's beautiful as well. I'm using a very cheap pop shield for this, almost acts as a sleeve and is elasticated towards the back. There's links to this mic and this pop shield in the description below. The TLM 103 is a great route to go down, especially if you're not just doing live streaming. If you are a musician, sometimes I'm asked why I'm using this quality mic with a live stream and uh, really it's to kind of match the quality that I'm trying to achieve visually as well. I'm trying to achieve the highest quality possible with my streams and it makes sense because I have this mic already at my disposal why not integrate it into my live streaming setup as well as my music and recording demos here at home and uh, in the other studio. In terms of IEMs or in-ear monitors, how you monitor yourself while you're live streaming, you might choose uh, to go with closed back headphones. You might choose to go with in-ear monitors uh, like these that are molded to your ear. These are actually not custom molds. They are just very cheap uh, IEMs that I picked up from Amazon. They're called ZSTs. They're very cheap. They're very affordable. I've only had to replace sees maybe two or three times over the last four years. And when I say affordable, I mean like 20 pounds affordable. In terms of the clarity that you get for that price, these are perfect for this use case. I also have actually been using these on stage for um, years as well. Like I haven't really ever invested in um, high-end IEMs, mostly because of the price tag. If music is something that you do on your streams day to day to day, especially if you're a drummer, especially if maybe the environment around you isn't as isolated as you'd like. Molded ears will do a great job in terms of cancelling out any noise in the room and just isolating uh, what you want to hear in your ears. So yeah, there's definitely some pros to getting actual molded customs over something as simple and easy as these. I pick these, these up because of ease of use, because of price tag, and also they come in red and blue. So that kind of works for me. <laughs> so next, let's talk software, more specifically DAWs. So digital audio workstations. For me, when I'm recording demos at home, I use Pro Tools. So when I'm recording any kind of song ideas, for example. But for live streaming, I use Ableton Live. Just a quick tip in terms of being efficient uh, and being able to kind of glide into things very, very easy, whether that's for live streaming or content creation in general. Something that I've done to just like save time day to day is actually made it so any software that I know that I'm gonna need, it just opens up automatically when I boot up my PC. So I know that OBS, I know that Ableton, my lighting software just automatically comes on as soon as I press the power button. Very small uh, step to take, but in terms of efficiency, probably saves me a lot of time just faffing around Around. I can go downstairs, make a cup of tea while everything kind of boots up for like two or three minutes. Just a quick tip on efficiency. So in terms of Ableton, I thought it might be helpful for me to talk you guys through how my uh, default Ableton session is set up for live streaming. I'll talk you through all of the channels that I have, which is fairly minimal, but most importantly, I'll talk you through the plugins that I'm using across my vocal uh, and the guitar channel as well. So let's take a look. So this is my default session in Ableton. Very, very simple just a vocal channel, just a guitar channel, and also a channel uh, for my lighting as well. 
um, I control a lot of my lights via MIDI and I have a channel for that in Ableton. So let's talk from my vocal channel first. So on my vocal channel inside of Ableton, this is what my plugin uh, chain looks like. So first we have the RX7 voice denoise plugin from Isotope. Primary function of this plugin is for noise removal, really, is to filter out and dial down um, a lot of the background room noise that I typically find in this room, especially because I'm running two PCs at the same time. And I also have an aircon unit in here. So um, essentially the purpose of, uh, of this plugin is to really cancel out any of the frequencies and the noise that I don't want in the room to go out live. So this is what I use for my vocal reverb. This is the RC24. This came with a native instruments bundle. Uh, and I have this plugin on a return send, which basically um, allows me to dial in exactly how much of it I want at any given time. It also means I can mute it completely um, if I don't want to hear a reverb in between songs, for example, and I have that set up on my stream deck so I can just intuitively uh, at the touch of a button turn that reverb off when I don't need it. Next in my vocal chain is this. This is the virtual mix rack from Slate Digital. Steven Slate, what a guy. Slate do some fantastic plugins and some great samples, especially if you're drummers. They have some incredible drum samples that I'd recommend, uh, especially if you're programming drums from home, perhaps you don't have the studio uh, space to set up and actually record a live kit. Steven Slate have some fantastic recorded drum samples that you can um, dive into if that's your kind of area. I'm also using the Raven MTI, which is also Steven Slate uh, as my audio PC monitor, which makes things very, very fluid for me when I'm in the moment live streaming and I have to make a quick change, I can lean over. Everything is touch screen. So intuitively, especially seeing as I'm using a very shallow desk and I ha actually have a trackball mouse because because of lack of space. Having the Raven MTI set up is super, super handy to use. Inside of this rack, we're running a vocal chain using the compressor, EQs, gain. And then at the end of my vocal chain, if I come out of this inside of Ableton, we have an additional EQ down here, which is just your standard EQ that comes with Ableton. And this is just my room EQ correction. Here's a look at what I'm using on my guitar channel. So for reference, I play a Gretsch Electromatic. I use Daddario flatwound strings. I also sometimes play acoustic so I have uh, a couple of Taylor guitars that I play. I never uh, plug in and play, I just play them acoustically and uh, let the Neumann pick up my guitar and my vocal um, at that point because I think it does a beautiful job. So first plugin is a basic guitar tuner and I've synced a toggle button on my stream deck using MIDI so I can easily enable or bypass this, just meaning that the audience doesn't have to sit there and listen to me uh, tune the guitar in between. So I'm using Amplitude 4 for my guitar tones. This is made by IK Multimedia uh, and there's a bunch of great presets already that come with Amplitude that you can play around with. Uh, you can change up the cab, you can change up the amp, um, whatever you want. I'm using the Edgy Pop preset that works beautifully for me. I've adjusted it slightly in terms of settings, particularly with um, the Gretsch that I'm, I'm playing. I'm gonna show you what my guitar tone sounds like with this bypass and enabled. With Amplitude Bypass, my guitar sounds like this. Not as gritty as I would like. So this is using the Edgy Pop preset. For me, I wanted to find a balance of a clean tone that has a little bit of grit. A lot of the songs that I play typically just uh, pop songs. So I wanted to find a nice happy medium where it's not too clean cut. There's a little bit of grit in there and uh, this worked perfectly for me. Amplitude 4 is free with basic amps and basic tones, but where the magic really comes into it is via the custom shop where you can essentially choose your own combos. You can choose uh, what amps you wanna use with what heads. And that's where you're gonna really find a sound that is more bespoke for what you're looking for. It is really worth sitting down and spending some time working with some default guitar tones that you can uh, have uh, immediately pop open as your presets that you're using in your live streams, especially if you're using multiple guitars as well. Next up in the chain is a few uh, other plugins from Slate Digital. I'm running an FG401 compressor and an EQ to bring out a little bit more of the brightness that I want from that Gretsch. Then I've got this additional EQ here that's essentially boosting the 200 Hertz range. And this is mainly a simple EQ for room correction again, because my goal was to keep the Neumann TLM 103, the microphone completely out of view of the camera. And I didn't want to use a shotgun mic. And because I play a hollow body, which is a semi-acoustic Gretsch guitar, a lot of the kind of high mids of that guitar acoustically in the room get picked up by the condenser mic. So really what this EQ's job 
is, is to kind of counterbalance that and boost uh, those low mids just a little bit. And then lastly, the RC24 reverb. Again, the same reverb that I'm using on my vocal, but this is independently on the guitar channel as well. I'm not sending uh, my guitar to uh, the bus where my vocal reverb is at all. Um, it has its own RC24 on the guitar channel. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into you know, how this is really a simple setup inside of Ableton and gives you some clue as to what I'm using in terms of my guitar tones, in terms of plugins that I have inside of Ableton that are accessible and just what I'm making uh, my sound, what it is in my live streams. The difference between dynamic and condenser microphones is that dynamic microphones are more suited to live and loud instruments. Typically the high frequency range from 10K and up starts to taper off on a dynamic mic, a condenser typically picks up full frequency range, especially on something like a vocal. You can pick up that really high frequency that adds that shimmer to the vocal that a dynamic mic just can't achieve. Also, don't forget if you are using a condenser microphone, you usually need to use phantom power. I wanted to go over some information on audio sound cards and how they work with ASIO drivers and MME drivers. Now don't worry if that sounds completely foreign to you right now, we're going to talk it through. But the reason I wanted to bring this up is because I feel like there might be a little bit of a gap of knowledge with some, particularly in the live streaming community, when it comes to common issues with uh, maybe pops, crackles, robotic voices, when you're using particular sound cards. And usually it's a driver issue. So let's talk it through. Let me uh, explain the basics first of all. When you're using any pro audio sound card, the difference is it will have an ASIO driver. ASIO drivers allow you to run extremely low latency audio so you can easily play along and monitor everything in real time. The problem with a lot of applications, uh, for example, like OBS, like Zoom, like any web browser, they do not support ASIO drivers, instead just normal Windows drivers, typically MME drivers. So it's very hard to send the output of your door, so Ableton, for example, to the input of any MME application, for example, a web browser or OBS. There are a couple of solutions where you can loop things around. And the most confusing thing about this is that your sound card will be able to run an ASIO driver and an MME driver at the same time. Your sound card will essentially function running both jobs. For example, maybe you're playing a YouTube video on a web browser that uses an MME driver. And then at the same time, you're using your ASIO driver if you're inside of Ableton. There's a few ways you can loop things around. And the confusing thing is your sound card will allow you to run an ASIO and MME driver at the same time. Your, your sound card will function doing both jobs simultaneously but you can only use the ASIO driver in one application at a time, for example, in Ableton or Pro Tools. Whereas multiple programs can use the MME driver at once. For example, you can run a YouTube video and Spotify at the same time. What you effectively need to do is loop back the output of the ASIO driver to the input of the MME driver to send the output of something like Ableton to OBS. There are a few digital solutions Synchronous audio router seems to be a very common one. But the problem with a virtual loopback system like this is that it's kind of added and thrown on top of everything else. And if sample rates aren't lined up and synced correctly, then this can lead to problems maybe with like a robotic voice sound or maybe pops and crackles. In my experience, you can get random errors using virtual loopback solutions. And that is the worst thing that can happen, especially if you're mid live stream, it gets frustrating. You might have to restart uh, your sound card or restart your PC entirely. So if you are using a virtual loopback and you've ever experienced those pops, crackles or a robotic sound, then typically it's because of that virtual loopback that you're using. It might not be uh, an issue with the sound card itself. Remember that. So what's the easiest way to send your output from Ableton? for example, to OBS. The easiest way to send the output of your door, so like Ableton to OBS, is to physically loop back with cables. You need a sound card that has at least four inputs and four outputs to do this. With most sound cards, the MME driver will only see input one and two and output one and two. You have to send the digital output of Ableton to the physical sound card output three and four. And then using physical cables, plug outs three and four out of the sound card into one and two into the sound card. 
This will mean that OBS, Skype, Zoom, etc., they'll be able to see inputs one and two, which is effectively the output of your Ableton mix. There's some links to sound cards that offer this in the description below. If you have a sound card that does not have ASIO support, there is an app called ASIO for All, which will enable uh, ASIO support for any sound card that you have. Just to be clear, the physical loopback isn't exactly something that I use in my studio, but I thought it was a solution worthwhile uh, to mention because I see this problem uh, as a common problem and I see it coming up a lot. So hopefully that helps if you're looking for an alternative to a virtual loopback. My new setup was all about efficiency. So I knew that I wanted two systems that would end independently handle my audio processing and my visual processing. So to route that audio from my audio PC to my broadcast PC, this PC in front of me, I have something very unique in place. I'm also using software to send some of the audio over a network uh, to link the two PCs. When planning the series of videos, my aim is to be informational and help you guys as much as possible. And really, no matter how much I explain to you my own setup, I feel like everybody's always gonna come up against their own set of problems. So I wanted a solution to be in place for you if you need extra help. So over on my Patreon, I've decided to host one-on-one -on -one monthly sit downs with myself, you, and sometimes my audio tech, James. Let's sit down, let's talk it through and go into deep detail. We're here to help. So reach out on Patreon, have a look at the monthly sessions we have available over there. And I hope it helps. Make sure you guys check out the visual episode, lighting episode, room design episode, and also the overview episode of this series. I hope this audio episode was helpful. I hope it gives you an insight into how I'm running things in my own studio. And as always, if you have any questions leave them in the comments below you can also take part in the conversation that's happening over on my discord in the stream setup channel you can talk everything and anything live streaming there i hope you guys enjoy the rest of the series and happy streaming